Well, good morning, folks. Um, Mike McHugh from Rural Aberdeen. I'd like to thank the Chamber and the uh, League of Women Voters for inviting us here this morning for the forum. Very, uh, very keeps everybody informed on the issues and the candidates and uh, as the election goes forward here. Um, I've uh, been a resident of Aberdeen or rural Aberdeen all my life and farmer, cattle feeder up there. And uh, I'm running for the legislature because District 2 is one of the most agricultural districts, <coughs> highly productive agricultural districts in the entire state. District 2 makes up about 4 or 6 percent of the counties in the state. And uh, the, those 6 counties, or those uh, 6 percent of the counties produce 16 percent of the soybeans and 16 percent of the corn grown in the entire state. With the, uh, the all the gyrations that are going on with uh, NAFTA and TPP and the uh, abominable tariffs that are in place or one day and not the next and who knows what's going to happen <coughs> from now. The, uh, uh, there's about a $3 a bushel drop in the price of soybeans in the last four or five months. And uh, the pricing of wheat or corn and wheat have both declined. Uh, it's going to be over a billion dollars worth of less economic activity in the state because of the uh, loss of income due to these uh, price gyrations. And I think a lot of them, some of them are you know, because of supply, but there's an awful lot of them that are going on because of the tariffs and the other issues that are going on. I guess, uh, you know, maybe on the local level, we can't do a lot about those federal gyrations, but uh, we can use, I would like to see the state mandated that uh, all of the state vehicles and uh, use E30 and uh, biofuel in the uh, in their fleet of vehicles. Uh, I think this would give the, uh, a boost to the uh, demand for the uh, raw quantities that we grow in the, uh, in the state, and I think that those are important. The other issues that I'd like to see continued are uh, support of education, uh, the uh, improvements in the Science Center and the other improvements at Northern State University, the uh, 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 <coughs> precision egg endeavors that are going on at SDSU, and the uh, technical schools all provide a, uh, a wonderful opportunity for our young citizens to uh, enlarge their, uh, encourage their education. So with that, I'll uh, wrap up here and, uh, and uh, appreciate your consideration in November. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out here today. My name is Drew Dennett. Um, I am currently serving as the District 3 representative here in Aberdeen. I'm serving my first term. District 3 is almost all of Aberdeen except for a little bit of the southwest corner and then Bath. So I'm running for re-election. Um, as I said, I'm just completing my first term. If I'm re-elected, some of the priorities that I want to see within the state budget would be for K-12 education, um, I believe that we need to keep focusing on that. I know a few years back we made a big increase through K-12 through and we need to make sure that we're taking another look at that. Another thing I think we should focus on is community support providers that Aspire. Um, every year we've had a meeting with them and it's very obvious how underpaid a lot of their staff is and I think that's an area that we really do need to be focusing on is community support providers. And then also, as always, uh, state employees um, need the support. Um, that's another thing that we heard a lot of this year um, during session toward the end as the revenue estimates were slowly creeping up and getting a little bit higher. Um, state employees were hoping for a bit of a raise and we did end up giving them a small increase. Um, one of the things that I want to focus on to help you know, receive more funding for you know, education or community support providers would be to cut wasteful government spending. And one of the things that caught me this year was during an appropriations hearing, the Secretary of State came in and testified that she would like her budget cut by $75,000, which is probably a bit unusual for a constitutional office or a government agency to come in and request a cut. So for her to come in and do that was you know, somewhat unprecedented. And after hearing that, the Chair of Appropriations and some of the members of the legislature actually decided they did not want to cut the budget, which I found a bit puzzling. Um, they did give some reasons why, but I do think as, as a legislature we should want to be encouraging different constitutional offices or different government agencies to go ahead and try to go line by line and see if you can get rid of any wasteful spending 
within their budget so that we can direct it to education or to community support providers or to state employees. So that's one, one area that I, I definitely do want to focus on if I'm reelected. Um, transparency has been another thing that I've tried to focus on. Um, the last two years, I have posted on my personal Facebook or my political Facebook page how I voted on each bill, made it to the floor. Um, I've been a strong supporter of our Second Amendment rights. I'm A rated by the NRA. And as always, I've been a big supporter of keeping our taxes low. So I, I see the wrap up sign here. Um, I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you. Justin Rimmick and I'm running for District 3 House. And I want to thank the League of, of Women Voters and the Chamber for uh, throwing this event. Um, I'm running for State House because I feel as though that uh, the working people and families in the state have been underrepresented <coughs> in the state legislature. I feel like we could be doing just as much for them as what we do for a lot of businesses in the state. We tend to put businesses first put family second and I think that's it's about time that we try try to change that tide and uh, a few things that I think we can do for families in this state would be uh, first of all uh, offer paid parental leave to families uh, we can work on closing the pay gap for women in the, state, in the state of South Dakota women make just about 78 cents on the dollar to their male counterpart and I think we can do a better job of figuring out solutions so first of all what the problem is and then try to find solutions to close that gap because I think it's the right thing to do and uh, by women making seven eight cents on the dollar it's robbing working families of an income that they need to, uh, to raise to raise their family other things that I think we can do are uh, try to figure out a way, a way to repeal the sales tax on food I believe that not only is it immoral but uh, it's a burden on low-income families, and I think that's one good way to try to uh, make our tax system in the state less regressive and uh, try to help out families that way. <coughs> Another thing I think we can do is try to work to increase the minimum wage in the state for working people. Uh, when you when you work 40 hours a week and you're only making 8.55 an hour, I don't I don't think that it's right. Uh, it's it's hard to live off that. That's about seventeen thousand dollars a year. That's just not enough to, to pay the rent, to put food on the table, and uh, in the state, you know, in this state, we, we kind of pride ourselves on, on hard work and trying to be self-sustaining, and we don't really like the the term uh, welfare. So instead of giving people welfare, let's give them a leg up and an opportunity to be able to uh, provide for themselves. And those are the types of issues I'd like to work on in the state legislature. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tamara St. John, and I want to thank you all uh, for inviting me. Um, I am running for District 1 House, and I want to just first of all tell you a little bit about who I am. I am a resident of Sisseton, South Dakota, born and raised there. I've lived in South Dakota all of my life. For those that know me, uh, they know me to be a historian, and I'm probably the, the most least likely to jump into politics. And uh, a professor of mine actually said to me, um, he said, I thought you were smarter than that. But uh, <laughs> it is uh, something that I, I came to this by working with the community within my area. I'm a real strong proponent for community building and building those sort of partnerships. One of the things that I think that I've been working towards for quite a few years now is impacting our area with cultural heritage tourism. We live in, in a very diverse community and it's my hope to bring my voice to the state in a way that maybe hasn't been done for our area here. Um, I'm able to speak in some ways uh, because I live it. And uh, as far as economic development, we live in the rural areas. Our small towns are so important. And to see our main streets, you know, we want to see them uh, not just survive, we want to see them thrive. And to bring some of that back through economic development. 
Um, how I am? Um, I'm, I'm a little bit older now, and I have the freedom to invest my time and and work <coughs> into communicating. I'm I'm really really big on consulting, listening, and uh, I believe that. Uh, my skills, my background in researching as a historian. I'm, I'm prone to work with the facts on any issue that comes up. You know, it's not my nature to follow uh, just the, the media hype on something. My instinct is to research in depth and to go from there. So, it, and to share those facts within a community on an issue. Um, that's basically it, and uh, thank you. I'm glad I got a seat close to the uh, microphone. That worked out really good. Uh, last week, Tuesday, I had a uh, total knee replacement. And uh, that's supposed to keep you down for a few weeks, but uh, okay. this was very important, so I made sure that it wasn't going to keep you down through today. And so I'm here, and my name is Carl Perry. I'm running for District 3 State Representative. Uh, I'd like to have your vote, and the reason that I'm running is several parts. First of all, we can't help everyone, but we can help someone. That's the way I really feel. Reagan said that a long time ago. I, I think all of us should be able to do something to help someone, and we all need to just do our best to help others out. I did put some information back on the table by Corey, and uh, that information is there for your, your taking. And also back there is uh, some yard signs, and if there's not enough, I can get more. Uh, but the candidates that I'm running with and against are Brooks uh, Briscoe and Justin Remick and Drew Denner, myself. Uh, you know, it's kind of exciting to see four people that are qualified for a position. It really is. I'm very pleased to be part of that because that's really what we want. We want to have an opportunity for choice, and I think you have some really good choices. I think the things that the other candidates brought up with uh, working more with E30 as a, as a state uh, uh, initiative is really good. I really believe that we need to make sure that we continue to keep taking care of our older people, our younger people, and those less, uh, less uh, given as far as financial and those that have uh, handicaps, but people that need community support. And uh, I think we should do all we can to do that. And I think when we go back to what Drew was talking about, the more we do a zero-based budget rather than just uh, uh, from this point forward, the better off we are because just because we spent, uh, like Cheryl and I have been married for 44 years, and if I listen to her, we'll stay married for another 44, but if I don't listen to her, we won't. But uh, long story short, uh, you know, if we spent uh, $1,000 last year, it doesn't mean we should spend $1,000 this year. We should look at this year and see what we need to spend. And that's really what I want to do is make sure that we're spending correctly. One thing that I would like to be known for is being a person that will compromise, a person that will listen, a person that will learn, and a person that then will react and act. And uh, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, this is a very important for us to get out, to meet our constituents, and uh, the League of Women Voters and the Aberdeen Area Chamber of Commerce offer this to us. And uh, transparency, accountability, plus integrity in government, those are the things that they offer. I have a, a pretty good business experience, and I think most of you know me through uh, my activity in the community. And uh, I'm a retired person now, and uh, I'm a Stevens minister, and I also have been married for quite a while, have a couple kids, love Aberdeen, and love you all too. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. Uh, thanks to the League of Women Voters of the Chamber for sponsoring this event. Uh, Paul Dennert uh, from out Northeast Aberdeen, about 20 miles. For you that don't know me or the, that do, uh, I'm a former legislator, served quite a few years in the South Dakota State Legislature, both in both chambers. Uh, I decided to run this year because uh, we're going to have a new governor. And uh, whoever he or she might be, I think that uh, I can bring some experience back to the process with my seniority as the years that I served on the Appropriations Committee. 
whether it would be uh, Rep Representative Noem is her title now, or Senator Billy, Representative of Washington, but or Senator Sutton from uh, from Burke area. I did serve with both of them in the legislature. The year that uh, I served with uh, Representative Noem, uh, we was both assistant leaders of our parties, so. I, I feel I've got a good working relationship with uh, Representative Nome, and also having served with Senator Sutton, I think I can bring a lot of uh, former experience to move forward with Senator Sutton. I'm running for State House in District 1. Uh, this year, uh, six years ago, after redistricted, they put the northeast part of Brown County in District 1, which uh, is a small portion of Brown County, but then we have all the day, all Roberts, and all its uh, Dave Roberts in Marshall County. I have to stop and think. Uh, quite a quite a distance for me to go to Russell, but uh, that's what we district did. A couple of the main issues that I was dealing with mainly in my term as a former legislator was taxes, and I think I've got a lot of experience, a lot of background in taxes, and how they fund state government and or, or local schools, state and local government schools. Um, about 70% of Angman taxes go to the school district, so that's the main issue. 25% uh, basically uh, goes to the county and the rest goes to the local township district. So I've got a good background on that. The other issue that I campaigned on in the primary, which I had a primary, uh, have been through one of those prior, was uh, my grandson brought it up, community-based funding. Uh, we had a, a terrible experience earlier this year on some nursing homes. So that issue is very high on my priority list. We've taken care of roads, we've helped education, and I really think it's high time that we look at community-based services, and that will be an issue that I'll be working on. And thank you for your time, and stand by for the questions. Thank you. <coughs> Well, good morning. I'm Lana Greenfield. I want to thank the League of Women Voters and uh, also you people who have come to ask questions or just observe. Um, it's a gathering that we um, will find out differences and uh, similarities. I've already heard some things that some of the candidates are thinking about working on that I too am interested in. My name is Lana Greenfield. I am a District 2 candidate for re-election to the, the State House. I am running because I am a multi-dimensional um, candidate. I was a teacher for 37 years, and so I think I know just a little bit about education. Um, I'm a business owner. I used to be a double business owner, and now I'm down to one business, Leon Greenies. <clears throat> Dolan, a, a restaurant. I was <coughs> thinking about why I was running about one o'clock this morning as I was cleaning the tables off from the last group of people that came in for supper. Also, I'm a landowner. Um, I own some land in Hamlin County. I grew up on a farm. And uh, so I know what the struggles were growing up and, and the situation of the farmers. Um, not having enough money coming in, uh, too much money going out, not knowing if it's going to rain, too much rain, and so forth. So I've seen all of the, the ups and downs of the farm life. Um, I'm running uh, because I am also a, a firm believer in the Constitution. I'm a strict constructionist. I believe in South Dakota values, and I wish to keep them intact. I am pro-life. I am a Second Amendment candidate. I am a voice of common sense in our government. I make decisions for the good of all people. I don't put myself first in any respect. One of the problems that I saw and am seeing is the shortage of nursing home workers, community service providers. These are resulting in the closure of these homes, and it's very imperative that we pass legislation that will increase worker pay, 
These are the people that are in the trenches. These are the people that go to work and work hard every day, and I think they deserve some reward. Um, we have meth and drug usage, uh, over abundance of that in our uh, counties, and I believe that we need to find something to um, eliminate this, and I think with that, the mental health also, the mental health issues will improve. With that, I'll sit down and let the next candidate come up. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Janae Hansen. I'm a candidate for House in District 2. Um, and I am a Turton native. Um, if you don't know where Turton is, it's in rural Spate County. I live here in Aberdeen now. Um, I've got about 10 years of policy experience going back and forth out to Paris and Abbott um, as a lobbyist, as someone who's deeply cared about the issues that's happened over the last few years. Uh, I grew up on a farm near Turton, South Dakota. Uh, where I really learned the value of hard work and community. I grew up in this strong, great community um, that really taught me what it meant and how important that was. And so as a candidate and a legislator, uh, one of the things that I really have focused on is community-based programming. Um, and that's something that's really important to me is that we focus on our communities, specifically our rural communities who have less resources. If you're not familiar with what District 2 looks like, um, District 2 is a small portion of Aberdeen, a lot of rural Brown County, Spate County, Clark County, and Hamlin County. So we're a large rural district, and I think that's something that we need to focus on um, as a le legislature, making sure that our rural communities continu continue to thrive and grow, um, including economic opportunities, uh, workforce opportunities, housing opportunities, and things like that. Um, I, I also um, am a social worker um, by trade. I have built my career around helping communities through strategic planning, evaluation, um, and data and community-based programming. And so that's something that I really bring as a um, asset to peer. Um, over the last four years, I've been a lobbyist with the National Association of Social Workers, their South Dakota chapter. So I've built those relationships. I'm familiar with the history of policies in South Dakota, what's going on, um, and I'm ready to be a boots on the ground right away. Um, so for me, I'm really focused on health care. My mom's a nurse uh, in rural communities. So both my dad is a farmer. Um, and mental health, um, just mental health specifically in our rural communities. Um, as a nation, we're rising suicide rates among our farmers and ranchers um, due to a lot of the economic stresses, lack of resources, and things going on. Um, so that's something I really want to focus on. The other part of my experience has also been in the drug and alcohol prevention field. And so as a state, we don't give any money towards drug and alcohol prevention, and I really believe in prevention programming as an evidence-based way to prevent some of our addiction issues long-term and save our state some money. So thank you, look forward to your questions. Good morning, my name is Brooks Briscoe. I'm running for House District 3 right here in Aberdeen. <coughs> I live in Aberdeen and spent most of my life here. I've got two children, 14 and 16 years old, so I've got some stake in the future of our state um, and their future. And the reason I'm running is the same reason I ran in 2016, is to give representation to the voices in South Dakota that don't have it. Right now we've got about 350,000 registered voters in South Dakota. Um, less than half of them are registered Republicans, yet Republicans hold about 85% of our legislature. Um, there's lots of reasons for the imbalance, but what we need to do is get that balanced out so Republicans don't have an absolute say in what they do. They don't have a majority in the House and the Senate, and there's a little bit of checks and balances. And you know, one of the things I like about South Dakota state law and only 26 states have this, is we can initiate measures. As a, as a registered voter, I can initiate a measure and get it on the ballot by going out and getting the petition signed and getting the community involved. I can get that on the ballot, have the people vote on it, and hopefully enact that into law. And in 2016, this happened with Amendment 22, uh, which basically was a campaign finance reform measure. It would have helped pull some of the money out of the election process and campaign finance, 
and given some balance to our election process. And this was an, an, initiation, an initiated measure by the people that uh, got the petition signed, it went to the ballot, and it passed. It passed as a majority, yet the legislature decided that they weren't going to enact this, that it was unconstitutional. And it really takes away our individual voice. And that's one of the checks and balances we have over our legislators, is, is that voice and that independence. And, you know, there, there's two ballot issues coming up this year that basically try and diminish our voice even more. They want to make it a 55% majority instead of just a straight majority. And they also want to limit uh, the subject of these amendments to one topic. And what that does is it, it really takes away what we can do. It makes it harder for us as individuals to pass legislation. And it really just unevens the playing field and keeps Republicans in charge. And, and I'm running to hopefully bring some balance, get a democratic voice for our independent and democratic voters. Thank you. Hello, I'm Caleb Weiss running for District 2. Thank you all for coming out. Um, really appreciate that. And thank you for the League of Women Voters and for putting this on for us. Um, I have a wife and two children. Um, I absolutely love my family. To me, that's one of the most important things that we have is our family. It's what has made South Dakota such a great state for all these years. Um, we are seeing the very core values of our families being eroded. And I think that's something that we really need to look out for. Um, I'm an opponent for our Second Amendment. I believe it is very important that we are able to defend ourselves. We are a very rural district, District 2. And, uh, you know, in a rural district, I know when I was growing up, our, uh, our police officer would get off duty about 2 o'clock in the morning. If you had a problem, it could be hours before someone could show up. Um, also, one of our, you know, one of the things that is a large percentage of our economy is tourism and hunters. Without our gun rights, we will lose a large portion of that income. Um, I'm also a big proponent of education. Like I said, I've got three kids that are coming up, and I think that we really need to make sure that we have a good, solid education system for our children. Um, I remember when I was growing up, that we, we, you know, when I started school in South Dakota, it was one of the best states in the nation for schooling. We had small town schools with small classrooms, with a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I think we need to get back where we can, we can keep our small towns, our schools strong, and we need to keep you know, um, strong education in our, our rural districts. I also know that you know, as a consumer, that any time there's competition in the private sector, that it is good for the consumer, that we get a better product for less money. And I think we need to, to look into finding better ways of getting competition into our school system. This is where we can have competition, our kids will win. They will get a better education for less money. And you know, we see that there are, um, a lot of states are, we're seeing a large exit from states with large taxes. Um, I think we need to keep our states, our taxes low. It's what, one of the things that makes South Dakota such a great state. Um, but we have some low taxes, and we need to make sure we have the jobs for those people being in the high tax states who are looking for someone to come with low taxes and a good job base. Um, I think you know, keep uh, getting jobs here, you know, to um, continue with development of our rural, our, um, I'm sorry, development with our ethanols and our biodiesels so we can continue to use the resources we have to create better jobs. Thank you.